Hi, I'm Lawson and I'm here with Jason and we're here with Truck Norris. We just put a CD7 digital dash in it. We're gonna show you that right now. Jason, duck, it's truck. We designed the CD7 dash for universal installation. So we put four mounting tabs on the back and we include soft mounts to protect it against vibration. We also include uh, mounting instructions in our website and we provide a 3D model template. Uh, so if you wanna make a custom enclosure, you can actually utilize that CAD file to integrate it into a custom enclosure that you design. But for the purposes of this installation, Jason decided to utilize the stock location uh, or the where the stock stereo used to reside and because we have some pretty cool tools here like a rapid prototyping machine he RP'd the uh, entire thing to fit perfectly and integrate seamlessly in the OE stereo location so I'm gonna get Jason in here now and show you how he designed this mount it's really cool now that we got our design all done and our pieces all printed up we're gonna go ahead and show you how this mounts up in this car and how it mates to our infinity ECU which was installed about a year and a half ago on this engine uh, what's nice about this is it uses one of our core harnesses that has a nice AEM net connector on it so we can connect our dash, our VDM, which has a GPS antenna on it, and we can get our acceleration data, our yaw, pitch, and roll. All of that displayed here on the dash. So now I'll go ahead and show you all the pieces of this and how this mounts in the C10 pickup here. So the first piece, which mates to our rubber isolators on, that we provide with the dash, kind of emulates a, a single DIN dash uh, piece. And we've got encapsulated quarter 20 by one and a half inch bolts in here. And this goes together with this piece here. They slide together. We've got some quarter 20 thumb screws. Just kind of thread on here and give us a nice tight clamping surface, which sandwiches this on this cutout here on the dash. We're gonna take our backing plate feed our wiring harness through it. This harness has power ground, can high low on it, as well as some spare digital inputs, beacon input, uh, so you can trigger things like turn signals, uh, night mode. We'll get this popped in here. It's as simple as plugging our harness into the back of the dash, get a nice positive click, put the studs in, Give the old dash a nice little reach around, and that's it. About a year and a half ago, we had the good fortune to work with John to convert this Blueprint Engines 540 big block from a carburetor to EFI. The cool thing about that is now all of those channels that are going into the Infinity ECU, things like air temp, manifold pressure, coolant temp, oil pressure, lambda, you got your wide bands on here, and, and many other types of sensors. Uh, all that data is coming into the Infinity and is being transmitted to the CD7 via that one plug AM net CAN bus connection. What you may not know is that we've hardware validated the CD7 to work with over 200 non AEM CAN bus devices. That means if you don't have an AEM ECU, you have one of our competitors, it's okay. If it outputs in CAN, you can put this dash in and you'll be able to display your channels on this dash. We're even developing templates and dash design software for third party devices that are gonna make it even easier once you've made the installation to get set up and see everything. But we know a lot of guys watching this video probably have an older truck or maybe a hot rod and haven't done an EFI conversion yet. So we have a solution for you too. We've done that with our 22 channel CAN sensor module. This little module is awesome. It allows you to add 22 channels of data to any vehicle via one plug connection. It's got a 36 pin Packard connector with flying leads. You simply install your sensors into the connector, connect that to the 22 channel CAN sensor module and with one plug connection, connect this to the CD7 or CD5 carbon dash and you can see things like RPM, speedo, fuel level, battery voltage. You get six switch or digital inputs. You also get eight voltage inputs, four of which are selectable. You also get four temp inputs. Any temps you want, you can add them. What's even better is if you want to add more channels than 22, you can daisy chain two 22 channel CAN sensor modules together and get twice as many inputs. 
Monty, you did a really nice job on that install, man. Thank you. You should be here any minute. Here it comes. Come check out what we did to your truck. So. <laughs> Who storyboarded this shot? <laughs> so, John. <laughs> So John, we figured instead of cutting into the stock dash, uh, we figured the best place to put this was going to be where the stock radio used to be housed. And Jason made a really, really cool mount for you. But as we're sitting here, I'm probably thinking, we all don't need to be in here. Um, let me get out. Jason can show you what he did and how he set up the dash for you. That's a Got a little surprise for you on this thing. We did yeah. a little bit of... Uh special layout work uh, specifically for truck Norris here. So go ahead and okay. key it on and um, check it out. <laughs> that is cool. Okay, so this All is right. your uh, main screen that it defaults to. Uh -huh. You've got vehicle speed, which is linked to your GPS input from the VDM. You've got engine speed, your air fuel ratio on the top, and then the target on the bottom. You've got your water temp and your oil pressure. Yeah. So those are kind of all the important things that you're gonna need to see right off the bat. Yeah. Um, and there's also a special little icon there. The, the middle eco. Of attack, the eco mode. I noticed that. Uh, go ahead, give it a little bit of throttle. It'll change to uh, <laughs> traction control. Burnout mode. Yes. <laughs> and then we can go ahead and cycle through the pages. You push the left okay. button. So you get okay. numerical readouts instead of yeah. needles this time. Yeah. Uh, your battery volts is on this page as well as your fuel mm -hmm. pressure. Mm -hmm. I can go continue on. Just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We've also got lap timing on the bottom now. Okay. Which gathers that information from your VDM. So if you're out on track in this thing, you can trigger your beacon and grab lap times. Okay, so then on our last page, we have a diagnostic page, which gives you a readout of majority of the important mm -hmm. channels that you're gonna need to see uh, all on one screen, like your water temp, vehicle speed, engine speed. Oh, hello, Nate. Oil pressure, fuel pressure. Throttle percentage, manifold pressure, ignition timing, what your wideband's reading, your wideband target, and your battery volts. And there's also an icon down there in the bottom left corner to let you know that your GPS antenna and the VDM is actually receiving a signal. So if that's green, you're good to go. If it's mm -hmm. red, it's still searching. Okay. So we set up some warnings in this dash. Anything that's a numerical readout, if you trigger that warning threshold, mm -hmm. those numbers will turn red mm -hmm. so that you can still read them, but you're notified that, hey, maybe you need to pull over, stop what you're doing and check something out. Uh -huh. uh, when we get to an alarm, that's gonna actually trigger our, our alarm page, uh, which you'll see here in a minute. We have a, a demo to, to show you how that works. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of your, you need to stop now. And <laughs> pull over, pull over <laughs> stop driving, yeah. pull off track. Um, so let's go ahead and fire this thing up and I can show you uh, how some of these work. Okay. So right now it's coolant rev limited to 3000 RPM. So we've got actually got a, a warning bar set up for that as well as triggering the left hand light on the yeah. dash here, the yellow amber light. Yeah. So go ahead and get it up to three and you'll see. See what it says? <laughs> Thanks for no one. <laughs> Okay, and uh, now we can actually show you what the alarm page does. And to do that, we've set up a little uh, demo where we unplug the fuel pressure sensor under the hood, mm -hmm. and that'll trigger your alarm page. <laughs> fuel pressure sensor error. Yeah, and so so this latches. So this won't go away like, like the warning messages yeah. do. In order to clear this, that fault has to be remedied, yeah. and you have to press the button on the dash to get back to okay. your screens. That's awesome. So that's all those work. We've got things tied into your water temperature, your oil pressure, your fuel pressure, uh -huh. your Lambda, uh, battery volts. All of those have been set up uh, to trigger warnings first, alarms second. Perfect. That's better because I had nothing here before. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So now you can drive with some confidence yeah. and know that you're able to actually see everything that's mm -hmm. being reported by that infinity unit mm -hmm. on that dash. So you have it, man. What do you think? Awesome. Badass. Yeah. Badass. Like it? Badass. Does yeah. it have everything you want in it? Mm -hmm. 
Totally. Okay. Awesome. Easy to see. We'll be able to add fuel once you get your fuel level sender. Yeah. Any other channels that you want to add, um, we can add them into the Infinity ECU and mm -hmm. push them in through the can. Mm -hmm. We've also got a CAN2 input, so anything that you may want to add that's CAN based, that's not AEM, we've got a method to do that mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Um, as far as setup's concerned, um, we'll actually do a, a separate setup video to show you that, but we'll show you how to go through and mm -hmm. set this up, so if you want to make any changes, I don't know why you'd ever want to get rid of that splash screen, but if you do, right. uh, we'll show you how to set that up, um, also how to reconfigure any of the channels yeah. in there it's really really easy to do and this template isn't released yet so we'll probably be adding this to our form and ultimately our software down the line cool thank All you right. so much this hey, is awesome. my pleasure man I, I enjoy it on the way to texas out to the c10 mm -hmm. mats next month yeah man. yep all right brother thanks lesson my pleasure <laughs> Another successful CD7 installation. Stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be showing you a lot more of these, both with non-AEM devices and 2008 and up vehicles, OBD2 CAN bus installations. Um, we'll be building our tutorial library for dash design videos. And if you have any more information that you're looking for, visit aemelectronics.com. And let us know what you think of this video. Leave some uh, notes in the comments. Click the little thumbs up button if you like it. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit aemelectronics.com. This is like a scene from Two and a Half Men. <laughs>